Hey, hey developers, today I'm going to show you Tailwind version 3 that just came out recently. Now Tailwind is your favorite utility class framework that helps you write CSS very quickly. So I'm gonna show you some of the new features that it comes with and why you may wanna use it on your next project. Hey, and if you're new to this channel, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also a big fan of Vue, React. If you guys like that, make sure you click the subscribe button below. Yeah, and let's just jump on into it. All right, so let's take a look at some of these features that we have. So this is the blog post that was put out on the Tailwind CSS website about Tailwind version three that just came out December 9th, 2021. If you wanna watch the video, it's pretty fun. It just goes over the feature features real quickly. Uh, here they are, or at least most of them. I don't think this is worth mentioning more, but they do have this just-in-time compiler, which makes it super fast. It's kind of built in now. So it's great that that came part of V3. I believe you could use it in, in older versions of Tailwind, but now it comes out of the box. Uh, one of the cool features I really like that came out of Tailwind version three is this every color out of the box. So you have all these uh, customized colors and I guess apparently the reason they didn't have a million different colors is because of bundle size, but they've been able to fix that problem. And now you have colors like fuchsia, pink and rose. Now, typically when I add Tailwind CSS to one of my projects, I usually always customize my colors. So obviously you can still do that here. You can configure your color palette or put all the different colors that you want inside of it. I highly recommend that when you start a new Tailwind project that you add the Tailwind config file and you add some of your own colors and, and fonts and things like that that you need. But it's really nice that it has some of these out of the box. To demonstrate some of the features of Tailwind today, I went ahead and brought up the Tailwind Playground, which you uh, can now use on version three. And this is just allows us to real quickly uh, right Tailwind, it has Emmet support, and we can kind of see here on the right-hand side what it's doing. For example, here I have a Hello World, and I added a Fuchsia. So I added this text Fuchsia 800, I made it bold. But if I wanted to, I can add some of the other colors, like Rose. So now it has this Rose color to it. I can, you know, make it not quite as dark. You still have all these new colors. And another thing really cool that goes along with the customizing colors is that now you can have shadows with a different shadow color in the background. So for example, here's a hello world and I have a green color shadow, shadow behind it. And the way I did that is I have this, I made this button here, the background is cyan, it's rounded. I have this padding of four around it. I used this new text rose color, made the text a little large. And then I added this shadow large, but I added the shadow green 500. So now I can have like different color shadows underneath it. Um, I can even change some opacity. I can, it, it's just really cool all the stuff you can do. So if you look at the official documentation, again, colored box shadows is one of the new things for fun glow effects, reflection effects, and more natural shadows and color backgrounds. So it's really neat that you can do that. It's just another, uh, another property and utility class that you can add to it. Some of the other thing is this scroll snap API. That's a comprehensive and composable set of utilities for CSS only snapping. So I'll show you that. If you go to uh, here, I created a quick demo that I kind of stole. But you can see here, let's say you're on a touch interface and you have this all these pictures here. So if I scroll, it just snaps to the middle of the picture that you're on. So you can imagine this like on a touch interface, you're kind of scrolling through, it just snaps it in. Um, you can see here it's snapping as I scroll uh, left to right here. And the way it does that is you have this new snap center that we can add in there. Uh, I have this snap X and I have obviously I'm overflowing on the X axis. That's why I may, I have the scroll bar right here. But you can see this is kind of a nice little neat feature. These are all unsplash pictures. You can even see uh, more demos of some of these. If you go back to here and I just right click here and look at the API. Uh, here, here it is. You can see here, here's another example of it kind of working the same way. You can kind of look more into the API if you want to. So that's kind of, I thought that was a kind of a neat uh, feature, a new feature with it. Another one it has this multi-column layout so you can finally build more that that online newspaper you've been dreaming about. Here it is, let me uncomment this out. So now we can set basically different columns in here. And the way I did this, is I have this columns two, and then I have small columns three and a gap six. So essentially what on this, on this right here on the smaller screen size, I have two columns, but as I go larger, I have three columns. 
So I can definitely kind of change the different columns that I have. And of course it hooks into all the responsiveness that you have. And nice thing about Tailwind Playground as well is you can see here, I can just kind of put my mouse over each one of these and it gives me the CSS it's generating. So you can see here on max width 640 pixels, it's columns three. On here it's columns two. Of course I have this gap six here. Uh, so I thought this is really cool. I, I think whenever you're going into creating a layout on your website, it's always, you're always trying to think of like, should I use flex? Should I use grid? And then how many columns I have? And just having one, one more of these utility classes to make this easier is, is really cool. So I would highly check out that as well. Um, there's a few other things I'm not gonna get into. Native form control styling. Uh, it's nice, you can make checkbox rebuttons and file inputs match your brand without reinventing the wheel. I won't get too much into that. They have a new print font modifier. I've never used print modifiers. I assume most of the websites people just look at on their phone or their desktops, but occasionally people wanna print things out and now there's some more cool utility classes to make this much more easier. They have some aspect ratio API. Uh, kind of a fun one is I like this fancy underline. So let's take a look at it. So I wrote this just paragraph here, the quick red fox jumped over the lazy dog. You can see over here now, I have this class underline, but now I can decorate it. I can decorate it blue, like I did it sky, the sky blue color. I can certainly change that to 900. Uh, let's say I added, let's say if I added rose. So now it's like this red color underneath here. I can even add like this squiggly line here. I have this decoration wavy, which you can see right here. But if I wanted to, I could even have hover effects on this. If I put in hover here and then I mouse over it, now you can see on the mouse over, it goes squiggly. So it's kind of all hooks into the really neat utility class system of Tailwind and it just works. So I just really like how cool this is. And you can see there's a, a bunch of other things you can do. You can change the opacity on it. You can even use opacity scale on it. And we already looked at the hover and focus states that you can do. You can do breakpoints and media queries and all sorts of stuff. So that's really neat that this is kind of a, a built-in feature now. And it just adds a little bit of polish when you're adding a website and you're underlining something or add squiggly lines, things like that. It also has this new right to left or left to right. Uh, let's say for example, you have, here, here's Mr. Tom Cook here, but you want to have it go um, right to left or left to right, depending on maybe a language. So there's this DIR LTR you can add onto the parent div. And I can change that from left to right to right to left. And now it's doing right to left. So it's kind of a neat little feature. I, I, I like the, that they added this in here. Um, I don't know if I'll be using it a ton, but it, it certainly I could see, I can imagine um, doing it. And you can also like change the properties. So that way you have different gaps between left to right or right to left and, and do different things here. So I'll do LTR here. And yeah, it's kind of, kind of a neat little property. I definitely see this for other languages that read left to right uh, or right to left and you need to make some changes to it. There's also uh, portrait and landscape modifiers. Once again, if you're dealing with uh, portrait landscape, you can kind of add different modifiers here. I haven't used this yet, but it kind of looks interesting. It has arbitrary properties, which uh, I haven't looked into this deeply, but it looks like this might be legal. We've, we made it possible to add totally arbitrary CSS that you can combine with modifiers like hover, ology, and whatever else. This is what inline styles want to be when they grow up, learn about the arbitrary properties documentation. Uh, cool that they've added that in there. I've never used this, but it's neat that it's there. Uh, they have a CDN. So if you wanna just use this, not for production obviously, but just to play around, you don't wanna use the Tailwind Playground, you can throw in a CDN tag and it has everything you need in it. And then there's tons of other utilities include touch action, will change, flex spaces, text indent, scroll behavior, and more which are apparently not important enough to actually have uh, tons of examples in, but they've definitely added more things to it. And if you look at the documentation website, you will see it. And they've also added a brand new, uh, brand new spanking new documentation site. Just, I mean, Tailwind always looks awesome. So it's cool that they've added even better docs for, for these things. And it's really intuitive and easy to use. Cool, so that is all the new updates 
uh, for the most part for Tailwind CSS version three. Tell me in the comments below if you guys are gonna upgrade to it and what your favorite new feature is. Let me know. Thanks.